Okay, so this is the last lecture, final lecture of the course, uh, lecture 27 on the PCP theorem. So uh, I'm gonna try to sketch to you this famous theorem in CS theory. Okay, so uh, as always, uh, I'll just start talking. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat or interrupt. So uh, this is just a sketch in one lecture. I'm gonna try to tell you a little bit about how the proof goes. Uh, a million years ago, together with uh, Professor Venkat Guruswamy, I co-taught a course about the PCP theorem, and uh, you can see the lecture notes for that if you Google the information, which is currently on the screen. Okay, so what is the PCP theorem? We've mentioned it a couple times before in this class, but we'll really get into it today. Uh, first of all, what does PCP stand for? It stands for uh, probabilistically checkable proofs. And it's a real gem in computer science theory. It's you know, considered one of the most uh, famous uh, theorems in, in the field. Uh, it was originally proven in the early 90s in sort of a succession of works by Feige, Goldwasser, Lovas, Safra, Segedi, Aurora, Sudan, Aurora, Lund, Motwani, Sudan, Segedi. And uh, it was quite a you know, difficult proof and like the concatenation of all these papers is you know, 150 pages or something. It's considered quite um, challenging. Uh, but then everybody was real excited in 2005. I remember sitting in my apartment in Seattle when I like checked the internet and ECCC and I saw this paper. I was like, oh, I got to drop everything and read this paper by Irit Tanur, where she gave uh, a new proof of the PCP theorem that was like way shorter. It was like 25 pages or so, which is really a totally different proof. Um, what's interesting and part of the reason I want to present it, you know, as the final lecture is that it's really only shorter assuming you have, you know, CS theory in your, in your pocket. So what people liked about it is, you know, if you kind of have like a baseline, you know, amount of knowledge about computer science theory, if you have all these tools in your toolkit, then her proof was quite short and not too bad, but it really combines a lot of stuff. I mean, we're going to see some spectral graph theory, some Fourier analysis of Boolean functions, error correcting codes, uh, expanders, CSPs, it's all going to come together in a glorious synthesis, and uh, we're going to prove the, the PCP theorem using all these tools. So it's kind of like a nice way to, I don't know, recap and mention a number of things we talked about in this course. Okay, so what is the statement of the PCP theorem? There's uh, many slightly different equivalent statements. I'm going to give you one that's a bit different from the one that I mentioned in previous lectures, but I'll uh, then tell you why they're all really the same theorem. So the PCP theorem is an NPE hardness result uh, for a specific problem, or, and it says the following. It says there's an absolute universal constant, epsilon naught, greater than zero. And so think of it in your mind as like 1% or something, but really just a fixed constant, such that the following problem is NP hard. Okay, and this is the problem. You're given as input a um, three coloring problem, but think of it like a CSP, like a maximization problem. So I called it max three coloring problem, G. This is my weird handwriting font for G. Hope you can get used to that. Um, so you're given a three coloring instance G. It's NP hard to distinguish between two cases. First case is where the opt is one, which you know in our CSP notation, this means there is a perfect assignment, i.e. the graph is three colorable. You can three color the vertices such that all edges are bichromatic, versus the case where the opt is at most one minus epsilon naught. So think of that as like 0.99 or 99%, meaning that not only is the graph not three colorable, but any three coloring of the vertices um, will make at least 1% of the edges bichromatic. You'll only get 99% of the edges at most, uh, I should have said monochromatic there. You'll only get 99% of the edges at most bichromatic, like you're supposed to in, in coloring problems. Okay, uh, right, so as I said, this opt, is you know the maximum over all three colorings of the vertices of the fraction of bichromatic edges. But it's going to be convenient for us to look at like the difference of this quantity from one. Okay, so I'm going to introduce some non-standard notation here for any CSP at all, script G, not necessarily three coloring, but think of three coloring for now. I'm going to write um, you know badness of G for one minus the opt. Okay, so this is sort of like the um, the least error you can occur, incur, or at least loss you can occur by uh, an assignment. So uh, in the context of three coloring, or max three coloring, if I give you a graph G, what is its badness? It's just, you know, the minimum over all three colorings of the vertices of the fraction of monochromatic edges. 
Okay, so these are the, the violated edges in the three coloring CSP. Okay, I'm just changing the notation up here saying that, um, you know, what's hard to distinguish and be hard to distinguish under the PCP theorem is the case where you're given a graph where the badness is zero, meaning there is a perfect three coloring, versus the badness is at least this, you know, epsilon zero, like 1%, meaning every uh, three coloring of the vertices has to monochromely color uh, an epsilon zero fraction or more of edges. Okay, and you know, the proof that I'm gonna sketch for you actually yields like a very pathetic constant. Like it'll, I don't know if, I'm not even gonna work through the numbers, but you know, it might give you something like 10 to the minus 20, which is horrible. But the point is it's like a universal constant independent of n, the size of the graph. Um, in case you're curious, the best known epsilon uh, knot that is uh, proved these days is any number less than 1 17th, or think of it like 5%. Okay, so zero versus 5% is now known to be NP hard. That's a result proven by uh, Austrian uh, Tan, Wright, and yours truly in one match of the summer in 2012. Okay, but uh, let's not worry about the constant too much, but just think of it as a fixed constant in your head. Okay, so it's an NP hardness result. Okay, so it's just like those classic NP hardness results. You know, you proved as an undergrad, just much more complicated. And so it's a polynomial time reduction from an NP hard problem, let's say the most canonical one, circuit sat. And uh, so it takes a circuit sat instance, which is a circuit, C, and outputs a three coloring instance, G, so it converts circuits to graphs. And it has the following theorem. I mean, this is the key aspect of it, that uh, in two cases, if C is satisfiable, then the graph that's output has a perfect three coloring. And if C is unsatisfiable, then uh, every three coloring makes at least an epsilon not fraction of edges monochromatic. Okay, so badness is at least epsilon zero uh, when C is unsatisfiable. Okay, and this is in contrast to like, you know, the classic NP hardness result for three coloring as normally understood, which would have look exactly the same, except that this would just say um, the graph is not uh, three colorable. But here it's saying not only is it not three colorable, like it's very not three colorable, any three coloring uh, you know, violates at least epsilon zero fraction of the three coloring constraints. Okay, and therefore, if you could tell the difference between these two kinds of graphs, you could um, solve circuits at NP would equal NP. Okay, so there's the uh, statement up there. And now let me try to answer this question. Why is this called PCP theorem? Like what, is, this is, you know, PCP stands for probabilistically checkable proofs. Like what does this have to do with proofs or probabilistic checking or what? So I won't dwell on this too much, but let me try to tell you a story that illustrates why this result is super cool and has something to do with probabilistically checkable proofs if you look at it from a certain angle. So, okay, let's assume we've proved this theorem. And so we know this cool polynomial time reduction from circuit sat to three coloring. And, um, now, uh, let's consider a particular circuit C. Let's consider a circuit C which checks if its input is a proof of the Riemann hypothesis or some you know, famous open problem in mathematics, okay? So, you know, you know, there's a lot of work these days on formalizing mathematical proofs by computers so that they're machine checkable and uh, there's lots of systems for doing this and you can easily cook up, you know, a, like a, um, a circuit that checks if the input string is an encoding of, of a proof of the Riemann hypothesis in uh, you know, some standard uh, proof system. Okay, and that's nice because, oh, you know, okay, a proof could be any length, but you might say I'm only interested in proofs that are at most one billion bits long. So C might have like one billion bit inputs. So great, so now let's say you're the, the editors of a journal, uh, you know, a fancy math journal, um, and you know, perhaps somebody comes along and says, hey, I've proven the Riemann hypothesis, I would like to submit it to your journal. Well, uh, you could say, you know, please code up your proof in you know, a machine checkable format, and then uh, you know, I'll pass it through the circuit and check your, your proof. And that's reasonable, right? Extraordinary proofs require extraordinary claims, so, or, Claims require extraordinary proof, so you know we can make the mathematician work a little bit harder by encoding the proof formally. But you can do an even cooler thing. That's kind of a funnier thing, which is you can say, you know what? Uh, don't give me a, a bit string that satisfies the circuit C. Please instead give me a three coloring, a perfect three coloring of the graph G that you get out of running this reduction. Okay, so I mean, you can publish the circuit C to everybody, you can publish the circuit G to everybody, it's produced by polynomial time reduction, 
And it's actually not made clear in this theorem, but it's also true that there's a polynomial time algorithm that in this case, where C is satisfiable, if you have a string X that satisfies C, there's a polynomial time algorithm that translates it into a perfect three coloring of G. That part of the proof is actually easy. So you can say, hey, mathematician who claimed to have proven the Riemann hypothesis, don't give me a, 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 a proof that I can feed into C. Instead, you know, work a little bit harder, run your polynomial time reduction and give me a three coloring of this graph G. Okay, it doesn't look like especially interesting because you know then the journal can be like, all right, I will now take this three coloring you've given me and you know check if it's a perfect three coloring of G. But you know a lazy journal reviewer can do a cooler thing, and this is where like the name probabilistically checkable proofs can come in. They can spot check it in an extremely remarkable way. You see, uh, if the mathematician is correct and they had a perfect proof of the Riemann hypothesis, then this graph would be perfectly three colorable, and like the three coloring they sent you would, you know, make all the edges monochromatic or bichromatic. But if the mathematician had a mistake, a proof a, like a wrong proof of the Riemann hypothesis, even if it you know, is different, uh, had a hemming distance one bit from like a correct proof, even if it was like, you know, slightly wrong in the slightest possible way, the graph would have the property that, um, uh, well, you know, if the, sorry, if, if the Riemann hypothesis is, I suppose, uh, okay, you have to add a little bit onto this, but it will have the property that um, when you run this reduction, every uh, wrong proof, will actually make monochromatic like an epsilon not fraction of edges. So like, uh, you know, think of that as like 5% of the edges. And now what a reviewer can do is randomly pick a constant number of edges from this graph G, let's say 100 over epsilon not, or, um, you know, 2000 if epsilon not is 5%, and just look at the 4,000 different uh, endpoints colors and just check that each of these 4,000 or 2,000 pairs are distinct. And if they're all distinct, then the reviewer can be confident that except with probability like e to the minus 100, um, the proof is correct. So uh, you get this amazing spot checkable proof where you just have to look at, you know, 4,000 symbols, red, green, or blue from the, the proof. And you can be highly confident whether or not um, the mathematician like had a correct proof that satisfied the circuit. So that's why it's called uh, probabilistically checkable proofs. But that said, I mean, that was actually how it was originally conceived, but people eventually realized it was kind of equivalent to this much more mundane thing, the NP hardness of sort of approximately solving satisfiable uh, CSPs like three colorability. Uh, there's a question, are such e circuits easy to construct? Yeah, uh, well, this is getting a bit more into like, you know, mathematics formalization. But um, you know, if you have like a like a, a mathematics uh, verification system, like you know these ones that exist, like Agda or Lean or whatever, uh, Coq, then they have like a small set of rules, and so you just need like a circuit that like first checks that like the proof is um, trying to prove the Riemann hypothesis. So like the you know the statement of the theorem of the proof is the Riemann hypothesis, and then it just has to check that like each of the deductions in the proof like follows from like this like short set of valid deduction rules in the proof system. So in principle, uh, yeah, it's it's no problem to construct these things. And actually, PCPs these days, I mean, all these constants I'm going to show you are horrible. You'll see like some numbers like 10 to the minus 20 and things that are much worse. But actually, people are using PCPs these days for um, cryptographic uh, applications that are actually practical. So it's pretty cool stuff.